So this question says uh, diffraction grading has some number of lines per centimeter. Um, so let me write down that information. So we are given n lowercase. Um, there's a bit of a convention uh, where capital N means uh, like a total number of lines and lowercase n is the density. So uh, lowercase n number of lines per centimeter. It's asking at what angle will the first order maximum be for some wavelength? Uh, so we are given lambda uh, wavelength uh, green light. So whenever you are answering a diffraction grading question, the number one thing to remember is that this uh, uh, analysis that you have seen before, almost like two weeks ago, um, for double slit, that argument still applies. So if you have a double slit of a slit spacing D, and you remember what the diffraction pattern, uh, sorry, interference pattern um, for that double slit looks like, and you remember that for that double slit, you are looking at one of these uh, uh, constructive interference locations. And you remember that for double slit, the constructive interference is given by d sine theta is equal to interference order times lambda. Then that's great. All of that still applies. Uh, you still use that same equation to figure out the the angle at which the, the interference maximum might occur. With the diffraction grading, really the thing to watch out for is that your theta might not be small any, anymore. So if you are used to using small angle approximation, then you know stop on, at least until you verify that it's a still small angles. And while with the double slit pattern, uh, it's common for the question to give D directly. For diffraction gradings, they will usually either give the line density or they will give you the two numbers, total number of lines and some length over which you have that total number of lines. And as you think through this uh, information that's given, you know, 2,100 lines per centimeter, I hope as you um, imagine that like a mental image, you know, you have imagine a spacing of a centimeter and you are given the total number of lines that if you wanted to find the spacing between any two uh, neighboring lines, that spacing is given by 1 over n in the unit of whatever densities are specified in. So you have, so you need this expression that one over n is the slit separation that you will use there. So with that, I think uh, we are all ready. So uh, let me, oh, yeah, let me just do, do it this way. I'm just gonna do, let my calculator do all the work. So uh, let me declare the variables that I'll be using. I'll be using variables, oh, um, let me say num. I think in lowercase n is a special character with, I don't want to overwrite it. I'll just say num. And the wavelength is lam. Also, I can't use lambda because lambda is a special keyword within Python language. <laughs> Sorry, so many <laughs> puzzles to step over. Theta, um, I think that's it. Uh, I might need an m later, so let me just uh, put that in. So really the equation we are solving for is this. Um, Instead of d, what I'll put it is 1 over number, that's the uh, substitution I mentioned there, times uh, sine of theta is equal to m times lambda. And I'm going to put this expression into a variable called equation. So make sure I type in equation correctly, looks correct. Then what I'm going to do that I'm calling is the lazy way to do this thing is uh, I'm just going to uh, have the a computer algebra system solve for the variable I'm looking for. I'm looking for the angle. So, okay, let's solve this equation for theta. Let's see what it does. Um, and that looks right. Theta is equal to that. Yeah. So, I'm going to put that outcome in the first element of the last output into my a variable. And then I can just uh, plug in the numbers I'm given. So uh, substitute in the wavelength of, um, it makes things easier if I keep everything, uh, you know, I'll just convert everything to basic SI units. 
because I'm dealing with the centimeters and nanometers. So wavelength is 535, 10 to the power of minus 9 meters for nanometer. And um, uh, M is 1, it's first order. Number is uh, 21,000 lines oh, per centimeter. Um, so let me convert the wavelength to two centimeter. That's going to be easier uh, on my head. So it's in meters now. So I multiply by 100 to convert wavelength to centimeters. And I can just specify the number that's in centimeters or in inverse centimeters, they will cancel out. So with that, um, now if I, as I get this answer, I can just plug it in here because it's asking for a degree. So I really have to uh, take this and multiply by the factor that will convert radians to degree because it only gives me radian answer. Um, so I have to do 180 degree divided by, ah, this is why I didn't want to overwrite that, uh, numerical approximation of pi. Um, so when I do that, yeah. So the left hand side, it just shows you the conversion coefficient and 6.45 degrees is the correct answer. So I guess this is a, uh, small enough of an angle that I could have used the small angle approximation for. So the next two questions should be very similar to this one. So I'll leave this on and hope that they are useful and help me answer these questions quickly. So this question asks, how many lines per centimeter are there on a diffraction grading that gives a first order maximum, okay, wavelength for some blue light at some angle theta, ah, yeah. So all this equation, it will still be, let me write the version of it that's been already substituted for. So with this uh, substitution already in, it's one over n times sine theta is equal to m lambda. So staring at this equation, uh, we've been given all the information other than one. We've been given the angle, we've been given m first order, and we've been given the wavelength. They are asking for n. Uh, that's great. Um, we uh, we can just solve for it. So I'm going to take the same equation that I typed it in earlier, and say this time solve it for uh, num, which is number density. Uh, let's solve the equation for number density, and that seems reasonable. So I'll put that into the uh, variable where I can substitute in. So for wavelength, uh, let's just convert everything to a basic SI unit. So it's going to be um, 410 times 10 to the power of minus 9 meters, or that's nanometer. Um, order is 1, and theta. Um, so the question gives an angle in degrees. Sage math only really under, understands radian, so I have to convert 31 degrees into radians. Uh, pi divided by... Uh, 180. Yeah. Let's see what it gives me. All right. Um, <laughs> let me just make sure it does numerical approximation of pi. It's, I can't enter any other way. So this is the answer that it gives me. 1.256 in basic SI units. And in basic SI units, it's this per meters. So you have to think through, okay, um, Wait, that doesn't sound right. Um, oh, oh, I see. Times 10 to the power of 6. <laughs> so um, so what it's saying right now is number, uh, number density is 1.256 times 10 to the power of 6 number of lines per meter. So I need to convert that to centimeters um, before I plug in the answer here. And I think I can kind of think it through. If there are like 100 lines per meter, uh, sorry, uh, if there's one line per meter, it's 100 lines per centimeter. So, uh, you know, I can't do this in my head. Let <laughs> me just, uh, so uh, I'll just write it out. Uh, so some number of lines, uh, per uh, meter. So the way you do any kind of unit conversion is you multiply by one. Uh, and the one that I'm referring to is a ratio of two quantities that you know are physically equivalent. 
but it cancels out the unwanted unit and gives you wanted unit. So I don't want meters, cancel out, and I want centimeter. I, I do want centimeter. So I say, all right, one meter per hundred centimeter. So, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I thought uh, what I was gonna do before was wrong, so yeah. So this number I get, I'm gonna divide that by 100 to convert the units of lines per meter to lines per centimeter. So the actual answer here should be um, 1.256 times 10 to the power of, instead of six, it should be four um, divided by 100. That feels right, yeah. <laughs> okay, one more question that should be along similar lines. So let me look at the next question. It says, what is the distance between lines on a diffraction grading? that produces a second order maximum for this light at an angle of that. Oh. All right, so they are back to referring to distances. So I think I have to re-enter my equation because the way my equation is currently entered, it's not good for solving for what they're asking for. So let's say equation is, oh, I need to declare my variable to distance as a variable. And the equation that uh, we'll have this all for is distance times sine theta is equal to m times lambda. Um, yeah. So let's have it solve for d. So my solution is previous output, first element, and I'm going to substitute in all the numbers. Uh, set, uh, wavelength of 760 times 10 to the power of 9 meters. Uh, and they said the second order, yeah, so for once, <laughs> I'm equals to, and theta of 60 degrees, wow, yeah, it's going to be really sh um, small distance, uh, yeah, so 60 degrees, so 60 times uh, pi, pi divided by 180 degrees uh, for uh, angle in radians, and then, yeah, I think they told the numbers, let me substitute this in, and See where we go from there. Now, the answer we get here is in meters. Ah, but what I see is that, why is there a parenthesis? No, um, what I see is that the power of 10 I have is 10 to the power of minus 6, which is great because 10 to the power of minus 6 meter is a micron. So I can just take this number and put it in, 1.755. But, you know, don't do this all the time. Just watch for powers of 10 and... Make sure you're not just ignoring parts of 10. You are verifying that 10 to the power of minus 6 meter is a micron. 